students sai ram welcome back to our sessions uh, i hope uh, your exams went very well and now we will continue with our lesson okay we were doing lesson number 1 in your science a that is laws of motion and this is our session 4 okay students so now uh, i hope uh, you must be remembering some of the things what you studied in this lesson laws of motion yes you studied lot of definitions velocity acceleration yes what is initial velocity final velocity yes then you saw the three main important newton's equations yes newton's first equation newton's second equation and newton's third equation yes by the graphical method we did yes did you remember what were the formulas or uh, can you say what were the equations that the newton has given the first one was v is equal to u plus at yes v is equal to u plus at second one was s is equal to ut plus half at square yes and the third one was v square is equal to u square plus 2as yes so these are the three important equations which are given by the newton we studied till here yes i hope you remember this now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to continue with the lesson yes please go through the lesson again read the lesson again so that you will remember what we have studied till now okay students now today we are going to start that is balanced and unbalanced force now what is this balanced and unbalanced force you must have played tug of war yes right so long as the forces applied by both the sides are equal okay till the forces till the people on both the sides i can say yes are equal what i will say it is balanced okay i will say that the force is balanced that is the center of the rope is static static means what it will not move in spite of the applied force yes both the sides forces are applied but how are the forces they are same on on the sides so i'll say that they are the balanced forces okay so it will not move on the other hand when the applied force becomes unequal now when this applied force becomes unequal what will happen students that is it becomes unbalanced okay a net force gets applied in the direction of the greater force and the center of the rope shifts in that direction yes wherever the force will be more there what will happen the whatever is the net force will get applied in the direction where there is a greater force yes wherever there is a greater force there the uh, whatever the net force total force is there it will be going in that direction okay and the center of rope means the rope center will be towards the direction where the force is more okay students okay we'll just see the picture can you see this picture where this people they are playing tug of war yes so here what is happening from both sides they will pull now if on the both sides if i say number of people are 10 for example can you tell me whether there will be a balanced force on both the sides yes because on both the sides the number of people are 10 okay but now one side if i make only 5 people and one side i keep 10 people so tell me students will the force will be balanced no the force will become unbalanced yes and where will be the rope pulled more towards the uh, area where there are 10 people pulling the rope okay students did you understand this what is balanced and unbalanced force okay now next we are going to study that is the newton's first law of motion we studied newton's first equation of motion now we are going to study the statements okay now what he says an object continues to remain at rest or in a state of uniform motion along a straight line okay unless an external unbalanced force 
acts on it. Okay, students. Again, I'll repeat. An object continues to remain at rest or in a state of uniform motion along a straight line unless an external unbalanced force acts on it. Okay. So, Newton's first law explains. What it explains? The phenomenon of inertia. Okay. Now, what is this inertia means? That is the inability of an object to change its state of motion on its own. Okay. That means what? Inability. Okay. Means an object cannot move on its own. So that uh, or it cannot change its state of motion on its own. This we called it as the phenomenon of inertia. Okay students. It also explains the unbalanced force which cause a change in a state of an object at rest or in uniform motion. So when I will apply an unbalanced force then only the object will change its state of rest or it will change its uniform motion okay all instances of inertia are example of newton's first law of motion so any of the object which does not have an ability to move on its own will obey the newton's first law of motion simple if i take a ball okay and i place it on the floor okay at point a from that I want it to move to point B. Okay. Can it move on its own? No. The ball cannot move on its own from point A to B. Right. So what I will say? It is in a state of rest. Yes. But when I apply a force. How is my force? Unbalanced. Yes. When I apply that force. What will happen? Ball will move from point A to point B. So, I made it in a state of motion now? Yes. But when it started its motion? When I applied an unbalanced force. Okay, students. So, this phenomenon we called it as the Newton's first law of motion. It is obeying. Okay. One more example I will give you. Can you see? This is a simple experiment which you can do at home also. I am taking a plastic glass. Not plastic, any glass you can take which is at your home, okay. Uh, mostly avoid using plastic. But here they are showing a plastic glass. Then what we are doing, a bottle also you can cut and you can take, okay. I have taken a piece of a cardboard, okay, which I have placed up, you can see, okay. Or you can take uh, any uh, thick paper also if you have, you can take, okay. And in between I am placing a coin, okay. Now what is happening you, here, you can see the coin is at rest now. Yes. Now what I am going to do when I will flick this card paper or uh, whatever paper, thick paper. When I flick it with my finger, the coin will fall down in that glass. Okay, student, you can do this and see. Yes, the coin goes inside that glass. Now why this happens, student? First, the coin was at the rest. But when I applied an unbalanced force, Okay, what happened? It changed its position. That means it was at rest. Now it has changed its position from that paper, card paper, what it was kept and it had went inside the uh, glass. Okay, students. So there was the motion of that coin. Okay, change of the position of that coin I can say. Okay, so this is the law of inertia also we call it as. Okay. Newton's first law, we also called it as the first law of inertia. Okay, so coin can move on its own? No, it is, has an inability of changing its state. Yes, but when I am flicking it, when I am applying an unbalanced force, it changed its position. Okay, students, I hope you understood Newton's first law. Okay, now next we are going to see something about the second law. Okay, now see here. Ask your friend to drop one plastic and one rubber ball from the same height. Okay. You catch the balls. Which ball was easier to catch and why? Think students. It is very easy. What you will say? Miss of course plastic ball was easier to catch. Yes. Plastic ball easily you catch it. And why it was easier? 
it was not very heavy easily you could catch it while the rubber ball was very heavy to catch it yes now we'll see so the effect of one object striking another object depends upon the mass of the former object and its velocity yes with what velocity that plastic ball is coming and that rubber ball is coming will be different yes so this means that the effect of the force depends on property related to both mass and velocity mass is also important rubber ball will be having more mass so it will be coming yes while the plastic ball will be having the less mass it will be light in weight so it will be easy to catch it yes so it depends upon mass as well as the velocity with which they are coming okay this property is known as the momentum what you will call it as students momentum by newton he said it it is the momentum now momentum has magnitude as well as direction magnitude means momentum you can give uh, you can uh, carry out calculation and get the value okay its direction is same as that of the velocity so with which velocity uh, it is falling same will be the direction of the momentum in si system the unit of momentum is kg meter per second okay while in cgs system it is gram centimeter per second now here more important is the definition of momentum you will remember and only you have to remember about its unit okay students so how you will define momentum momentum is the product of mass and velocity of an object okay this is important to remember and the units are important okay and momentum is a vector quantity okay students how what is the formula can you see it here p is equal to m v this is also important what you will remember students only you will remember what are its units its definition its formula p for momentum we write it as capital p is equal to m into v and it is a vector quantity this things are only important you have to remember okay now see here next we will see newton's second law of motion the statement okay the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the applied force and the change of momentum occurs in the direction of the force okay students what you will remember the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the applied force and the change of momentum occurs in the direction of the force okay now what is the statement we will see that okay now see here. suppose an object of mass m has initial velocity u you have got an object which has mass m its initial velocity is u when a force f is applied in the direction of its velocity for time t for time t i am uh, i have applied some force f okay its velocity becomes v it will change its position so initial velocity and you will get the final velocity final velocity we write it as v okay therefore the initial momentum of the object now we have to talk in terms of momentum so what will be the initial momentum you know what is the formula p is equal to i'll just write it down what is the formula p is equal to m into v now instead of this v what i have written for initial one u can you see it here yes because it is initial one and what will be its final momentum after time t it will be v okay so p is equal to m v it is okay students ha huh. now therefore rate of change of momentum now what you have to do you have to see the rate of change of momentum is equal to change in momentum upon time what is the formula for rate of change of momentum students change in momentum upon time i hope till here you understood okay now we will see in the next slide now here therefore rate of change of momentum you can see that is what it is given mv yes final minus initial momentum mu divide by t can you see this equation here 
yes is equal to now here both where i can see m and m is there so what i have done i have taken m common okay v minus u upon t i got okay so what i am going to get i am going to get m a how m a k because you know that v minus u you know v v minus u upon t is the value for a acceleration you remember yes so instead of this equation i have written a okay students i hope you understood okay so what i got according to newton's second law of motion the rate of change of momentum is proportional to the applied force yes because m into a is the formula for force you remember this so we will say that according to newton's second law of motion the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force so see ma is directly proportional to f okay so f is equal to what we have written you know this f is equal to ma you have used this right so what we have got students we what we have got ma is directly proportional to f this ma is the rate of change of momentum which is directly proportional to the applied force okay so to remove this proportionality sign i have put the k okay k is what constant of proportionality and its value is 1 remember the students so what you got f is equal to m into a yes we have used this force formula yes you remember in the second chapter yes so now what is the statement if the same force is applied on different objects the change in the momentum is the same okay so if the same force same amount of force i am applying but the objects are different then also change in momentum is the same okay students i hope you understood this okay how we have calculated the force applied it is the mass into acceleration okay now next in si system the unit of force is newton you all till now must be knowing now yes newton how you will define it the force necessary to cause an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in an object of mass 1 kg is called 1 newton okay so acceleration you will remember 1 meter per second square and how much mass of the object 1 kg okay then in cgs system what it is students dyne okay we called it as dyne and how you will define dyne the force necessary to cause an acceleration of 1 cm per second square in an object of mass 1 gram is called one dyne okay simple here if you remember one dyne is equal to 1 gram into 1 cm per second square this equations if you remember you can easily write the definition okay students i hope you understood this unit of force in si is the newton in cgs is the dyne this is important to remember okay now next we are going to see newton's third law of motion now what does newton's third law of motion tells us every action force has an equal and opposite reaction force which acts simultaneously okay so every action force yes it has got an equal and opposite reaction force which acts simultaneously okay now action and reaction are terms that express force both are action and reaction forces this forces act in pairs always they will be in pairs one force cannot exist by itself okay action and reaction forces act simultaneously action and reaction forces acts on different objects okay not on same objects they acts on different objects they do not act on the same object and hence cannot cancel each others effect okay they cannot cancel out each others effect okay because they do not act on the same object okay students now see here 
here are some example now here two persons are skating okay in the first diagram you can see okay so now both of them they will be applying the same they have joined their hands they are pushing each other means both of them one is applying an action force second one is showing the same amount of the reaction force okay students did you understand this same way if you can see in the second diagram a book here you can see a book this is my book okay that book is placed on this table okay students now if you see that this book will be applying some downward force okay same way table will be applying some upward force so every action force has an reaction force okay so for example that force is n for example and whatever the book is has been pulled down it is pulled by the gravitational force yes which you can write it as mg yes students so here as the table is applying a force on the book book is also applying a force on that table okay so every action force there is a reaction force which acts simultaneously and they are opposite and equal okay students i hope you understood this okay now so today we studied about we will have come to the end of our uh, this part today okay so you have studied about balanced and unbalanced forces yes you see, saw the example of tug of war game okay then we studied the newton's law of motion yes you studied the newton's three laws of motion okay students i hope you will uh, go through again properly only important study the statements of the law very important to study the statement of the law okay and the units for momentum definition and units force you will remember the units okay and balanced and unbalanced force definition okay students i hope you understood this okay uh, we'll meet in the next presentation thank you sairam